Welcome to Learning with Philemon. In the previous video, alkenes, we learned that alkenes contain a double bond between two carbon atoms. We also learned that alkenes undergo addition reactions, in which this double bond breaks, and the two carbon atoms involved in the double bond form two new bonds. In this video, we will be learning what the mechanism, the steps that occur in these types of reactions, is. Let's take the example of a reaction between ethene and hydrogen bromide, HBr. The double bond in ethene means that there are four shared electrons between the two carbon atoms. This means that there is a high electron density in this area. Remember that in the hybridization video, we discussed that the carbons in ethene are sp2 hybridized. They form a sigma bond using the sp2 hybrid orbitals and a pi bond with a remaining electron in the unhybridized p orbital. The electrons involved in the pi bond are relatively far from the nuclei and therefore experience a weaker attraction to the nuclei. Pi bonds break more easily than sigma bonds. If the pi bond breaks, these electrons can be used to form a new bond. This is why alkenes are more reactive than alkanes. Alkanes are sp3 hybridized and therefore contain only sigma bonds. Sigma bonds are harder to break. As we saw in the polarity video, when one element is more electronegative than the other, it pulls the shared pair of electrons closer to itself, creating a polar bond. This is the case in hydrogen bromide. Bromine is more electronegative than hydrogen, so bromine is slightly negatively charged, as denoted by the delta minus, and hydrogen is slightly positively charged, denoted by the delta plus. The electrons in the pi bond are attracted to the slightly positive hydrogen atom. As a result, there is a bond formed between one of the carbon atoms and the hydrogen atom. The double-headed arrow depicts the movement of an electron pair. In this reaction, hydrogen bromide is an electrophile, an electron-deficient species that accepts an electron pair. Electron-deficient means that it has less electrons than optimal. The alkene is a nucleophile, an electron-rich species that donates an electron pair to an electron-deficient species. As we know, hydrogen can only form one covalent bond. So as the bond between carbon and hydrogen forms, the bond between hydrogen and bromine breaks, as denoted by the arrow. As a result of this first step, a bromide ion Br- and this carbocation intermediate is formed. A carbocation is a compound that contains a positively charged carbon atom. Because the double bond is used to form a bond with hydrogen, this carbon is left with one electron less. A reaction intermediate is a species that is temporarily formed in one step of a reaction mechanism. It is subsequently consumed to ultimately make the final product. In the next step of the mechanism, the negative bromide ion is attracted to the positively charged carbon atom. A lone pair of the bromide ion is used to form a bond with the carbon atom. In this step, the bromide ion is acting as a nucleophile, donating an electron pair, and the carbocation is an electrophile, accepting an electron pair. Note that the double-headed arrows in organic chemistry always start at electrons and end up at nuclei. The product of this reaction is bromoethane, a halogenoalkane. Now let's see what happens when an alkene reacts with a halogen instead of a hydrogen halide. The reaction between a halogen and an alkene follows the same mechanism. In this example, we have the halogen molecule bromine, Br2. However, this reaction could occur with other halogens, such as chlorine, fluorine, and iodine. As both atoms have the same electronegativity, the bromine-bromine bond is not polar. However, a temporary dipole can form, making one bromine atom have a slight positive charge. For more on temporary dipoles, please watch the intermolecular forces video. Remember to include the delta minus and the delta plus when drawing these mechanisms. 
This helps you remember where the electrons from the double bond will be attracted to. The same three arrows are drawn in this reaction as in the previous one. The first arrow starts at the double bond and ends up at the slightly positively charged atom. This shows the bond forming between the carbon and in this case bromine. Note that the mechanism is called electrophilic because the double bond is attracted to an electrophile. The second arrow starts at the bond between the halogen atoms and ends up on the slightly negatively charged bromine atom. This shows the breaking of the bond. In the previous slide we saw that the bond between hydrogen and bromine breaks. The final arrow starts at one of the lone pairs of a nucleophile, in this case a bromide ion, and ends on the positive carbon atom of the carbocation. The product in this reaction is the halogenoalkane 1,2-dibromoethane. The only difference between this and the previous reaction is that in this reaction, both carbon atoms bond with bromine atoms. Note that the mechanism is called addition because atoms are added to the alkene as the double bond breaks. In higher level questions, you are expected to be able to draw the mechanism between alkenes and hydrogen halides or halogen molecules. Note that in this video, we have dealt only with symmetrical alkenes. In the next video, Markovnikov's rule, we will see what happens when the alkene is not symmetrical. To consolidate your learning, try to draw a few mechanisms by yourself. Thank you for listening. If you haven't already, please subscribe for more content. Stay curious.